welcome to my channel. My name is Christina and I hope you're doing well. Today I have a meal prep video for you. So today is a Sunday and usually I like to cook on a Sunday for a couple of hours to prepare a few meals that will get me started for the beginning of the work week. So the five recipes I have prepared for you are the following. So first of all, I'm going to make a cauliflower casserole. So I already have a video on my channel with this recipe. Usually I use cauliflower and sweet potatoes, but in this case I don't have any sweet potatoes, so I'm going to use some of the carrots here. Then we have a moussaka meal. So I'm Bulgarian and in Bulgaria we make the moussaka differently than it is made in Greece. So the, the traditional recipe is with eggplant, but I will be making it with potatoes, like the Bulgarian version, and with some minced meat. So this is mock meat from the brand Happy Boar. I've spoken about this brand quite a few times on this channel. So I did buy in bulk their products. They arrived frozen and I have many of them in my freezer. So I use them sparingly throughout the week and it, they last for a long time since they are frozen. Then we have some hummus, obviously. So I've already meal prepped some of my chickpeas. So yesterday, uh, so actually the day before yesterday, I soaked them for around 18 hours. Then yesterday I cooked them in some uh, salted water. So I'm going to use half of those for uh, the hummus and then, and then probably freeze the rest or save them for the end of the week to make a curry or something like that. So that's three. Then the fourth thing I'm going to prepare is a tofu mixture that will be used partly in my moussaka recipe and then partly as a meal prep for a savory tart. So there's also a video about this recipe on my channel. I have already prepared this, I didn't write down the recipe, so today I'm going to write it down and make sure I save it because it turned out really well. So I'm going to use half of that topping. So it's basically the mixture that I use as a topping and when it is baked it has this kind of a souffle texture. It's difficult to explain but I hope you understand what I mean. So I will post a picture of the savory tart that I prepared and so I will use half of it for the moussaka topping and then the other half I will use to make that same tart later throughout the week because I have some spinach and I have some bacon bits. So I won't be filming that because uh, I already have a video on that. And then the fifth recipe will be a sweet recipe. So I'm going to try and make a crumble with these sad looking uh, mango and banana. The mango is, is making a noise. It's like a mango kinder surprise. And then, and then I'm going to add some frozen raspberries. Okay, let me check my list. I think that's all I have. Okay, so let's get cooking guys. So the cauliflower casserole is something I prepare very often. There's a dedicated video on my channel that I will link in the description below. So I've prepared already the bacon bits and I've salted the boiling water. Then I'm going to add the cauliflower and the carrots. So there's quite a bit, I kind of made a mess. Make sure you're careful with the boiling water. So I have parboiled the vegetables here. I think it takes around 15 minutes in boiling water and they should be good to go. And then I'm going to start preparing the bechamel on the side with some olive oil. Then I'm going to add the flour to make the roux. And then I will progressively add the milk that I have preheated. So this is unsweetened soy milk. Make sure you whisk continuously so that there are no clumps in your bechamel. And let's add our nutritional yeast. I'm definitely eyeballing here and I taste as I go, but I would say that's about half a cup of nutritional yeast for one liter of soy milk. I also had a small piece of vegan cheese in my fridge that I used up in the bechamel. This is definitely optional, but if you have any vegan cheese on hand, you can add to the bechamel. It melts and it adds extra flavor. And let's not forget the salt and pepper. After 15 minutes, our veggies should be parboiled, so let's drain them carefully and add them in our baking dish. On top of the veggies, let's add the bacon bits and let's pour the bechamel on top of everything. Make sure you mix everything well so that the bechamel gets in all the veggies and covers everything equally. I had been preheating the oven at 180 Celsius and now it's time to put our 
casserole into the oven for around 30-35 minutes. So just keep an eye on it and it's, when it's ready you can take it out. Okay guys, so the casserole is in the oven and I'm going to get started on the moussaka. So let me show you the mise en place. So for the main ingredients, we have the minced meat here, the potatoes that I have peeled and cut up in small cubes, and then I have some shallots. So that's the base. I'm going to also deglaze with a little bit of red wine. You don't have to use wine, you can use vegetable stock. And then the topping is what I'm going to prepare now. So last time I prepared this completely, um, completely unplanned recipe was using uh, soft tofu. So this is, uh, yeah, the soft tofu that I'm going to use two of these small soya yogurts. So put these in the blender and also nutritional yeast. And then the secret ingredient. So normally this is done with flour. But I have this packet of Korean crispy pancake mix. So, okay. so my partner prepares these Korean pancakes that look like this. Uh, and there are several brands of this Korean crispy pancake mix. And this is not the brand that he prefers. So we ended up buying this, but we are not really using it as it is intended. So I basically, so that it doesn't go to waste, I just add it here and there so that it goes. And it's one kilo, so it's quite a bit. So the main ingredient here is cornstarch, then we have some rice flour and some baking powder and a lot of like salt, sugar, blah, blah, blah. So you can recreate this at home with basically cornstarch and baking powder and flour, either rice flour or regular flour, anything. The, the main point of this flour is that it has cornstarch and it has baking powder. So I'm going to add a bit of this to my wet ingredients with the nutritional yeast and then mix it in a blender. Half of that will go towards the moussaka, the other half will go towards the savory tart that I mentioned earlier. So I will go ahead and prepare this now in a blender. I will make sure I write down all the measurements this time around so that you can use it if you want and then so I can also refer to it in the future. So here we go, let's get cooking. So after the initial struggle to open the tofu packet, I'm going to blend the tofu. So that's 380 grams of silken tofu. And then you see here two soya yogurts, each 100 milliliters. I ended up adding three, in fact. I also added nutritional yeast and some of that flour I showed you earlier. I also added a bit of water to thin out the mixture, as well as some salt. So as you can see, this is quite a versatile mixture. It's great that there's tofu in it that ups the protein content in the meals. So that's pretty much the ingredients. I blended everything off camera and I will use this in two meals, the moussaka and a savory tart later throughout the week. So in the heated pan with a little bit of olive oil, I added the shallots and after a few minutes, I added the vegan minced meat. I cook everything for five to seven minutes and then I added some of the red wine. Again, you don't have to use red wine. You can use vegetable broth. I also used some seasoning like salt, pepper and vegetable stock. After the wine is evaporated, I added in the potatoes. This is an optional step. I don't think it's part of the traditional recipe. So you can or you don't have to do that. I just like to mix everything together before putting it in the oven. I also added some Herbe de Provence, which is a herb mixture very popular in France. And after 10 minutes or so, we are ready to move forward with the baking so i will transfer the mixture into my baking dish and pour on top the tofu mixture i showed you earlier okay just realized i hadn't filmed this bit my camera didn't film apologies so i simply transferred the potatoes and the minced meat into my baking tray here then i poured on top the mixture of tofu 
and yogurt and the crispy mix that I showed you earlier and the result will be that this layer will crisp up and it becomes kind of a souffle texture and I'm going to put this in the oven our here let me show you our casserole is almost oh steam sorry here we go our casserole is almost ready so I'm going to take it out and put our moussaka in the place and then also get started on the crumble so that I take advantage of the fact that the oven is on. Okay, let's go. Let's get started with the crumble. So I have here the raspberries and the mango and the sad looking banana. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of lime so that it doesn't oxidate. Okay, we're going to quickly cook the fruit, but before that I want to get ready with the crumble. So I'm going to start with two spoons, well, two spoons, yeah, here we go. Let's try three, okay, three regular flour, so three spoons of regular flour. I have here some almond flour that has been lying around, I haven't used it in a while, so I'm going to try and use it up. Let's see, can we do all? Yeah, I'm just going to do half for now. And then a little bit of sugar. So I don't have vegan butter, but I read online that you can use olive oil instead. You just have to put it in the freezer or something for a while. So I'm going to do that. I have quite a bit of olive oil on hand, so I'm going to do that. Here we go. So. I'm adding olive oil and then I go with the fingers. I mix everything. So it has to be crummy as a crumble, as the name suggests. So this is the result. Can you see? No, you can't. Here we go. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to add a little bit more of the crumble of the olive oil and also a little bit of salt. Where's my salt? Oh my god, guys. I've never done this before, but I'm pretty sure it's going to work out. And then I'm going to cut up some almonds for the crunchy, crunchy, crunchy part. Okay, hold on. Let me show you. A few moments later. So this goes into the freezer. Then I'm going to cut up some of my salty almonds here so that they add a bit of crunch. And I also have some dark chocolate with ginger. So I'm going to cut a little bit of that to put in the crumble. All right. So, here we have our fruit, I'm heating up the pan and I'm going to caramelize our fruit, add the raspberries, then transfer to our baking tray, top with the chocolate, the almonds and the crumble and put it in the oven. I'm also going to add a little bit of uh, vanilla sugar. So this is something I use in my uh, cake, basically in my baking sweet baking, but I'm going to add some to the fruit to add a bit of flavor. Ooh. Smells amazing, guys. So this is going to caramelize and it's going to be yummy.
So our fruit is ready. Now let's assemble our crumble. So of the fruit goes first into our baking tray. Then chocolate. Okay, then the almonds. Let's add the crumble. So I will crumble it with my fingers so that it creates these bits rather than becomes rather than it becomes all floury. So let's go like this. So the article I read online said you have to pinch it with your fingers. So that it's actual crumbs clumped together rather than just sandy flour. I'm going to link the article in the description. And I think we are good guys. So this is the result. Okay, I'm going to put it in the oven now together with our moussaka and show you the result. Okay, let's take a look at our moussaka and crumble. They are nicely bubbling. I'm going to leave them for another 10 minutes and take them out and show you the result. And now to the final part of the meal prep, the hummus. So I have the chickpeas that I've already prepared. I have the tahini here, cumin, lemon juice, garlic and salt oh and also wait most important most important ingredient is the olive oil so that's the mise en place i pretty much eyeball this guys i will try to take stock of the exact measurements and write them down but i've done this many times i eyeball it so let's get cooking I usually meal prep the chickpeas by cooking around half a kilo uh, a week or every other week. I make hummus pretty much every week, either for us or when we go to see friends, I always bring a Tupperware with homemade hummus. The rest of the chickpeas I typically will either freeze for later during the week or I will cook in curries or most, most often in the coconut uh, spinach curry I showed you in my last video. So I'm going to use my Vitamix to blend all the ingredients. When I first got my Vitamix, I realized it's not easy to make hummus in it, or rather I was not very good at it because I wasn't adding enough liquid. So you need to have enough liquid, guys, for the Vitamix to be able to move everything around and blend everything around. And then you can use the special thingamy that the Vitamix comes with but really it's important to add water. I use the cooking water from the chickpeas, but you can add tap water or extra olive oil or extra lemon. Obviously you need to be careful not to make the hummus too liquid. It's a fine balance, but if you do this often enough, you'll get the hang of it. And it also depends on the blender you're using. In my case, I don't have a kitchen robot, so I'm using my Vitamix, which is very narrow at the end where the blades are. So I think that's why I've been having this issue. Okay, final taste test after the adjustment and we are good to go. All right, so here is the result of the hummus that I've transferred into a Tupperware. I like to decorate it with a little bit of olive oil paprika and a few of the chickpeas here we go ready for the week hey guys so here's the final result the kitchen smelled amazing so let me walk you through the result so here we have the casserole with the cauliflower and carrots i think this is around six servings then we have the moussaka here, which is around four servings. This is quite hot. 
and I don't know if you see the topping is quite crispy so I will try and show you the inside of it when we cut it up then we have the crumble which smells amazing can't wait to try it with probably some ice cream then we have the hummus we prepared and then the extra portion of the topping that I use for the moussaka that I'm going to use for a savory tart so the main meals will be served with the side of salad or green beans then the hummus we will eat uh, I think for breakfast on toast or with some carrot sticks as a snack and obvi the crumble with ice cream oh my god guys well we'll see I think we have some ice cream in the freezer stay tuned Follow me on Instagram to see how this turns out with ice cream. And here we go. So this took me around two and a half hours, I think. Yeah, two and a half hours, three hours with the filming and the cleanup. And uh, these are around 10 meals. We're a household of two. So I think that's the week's worth of meals, plus some snacks, breakfast, and sweet dessert. Here we are. Take care, guys. Hey guys, so here we go. That's the end of the video. That's the meal prep I have prepared for the week. I can't wait to try the moussaka. It smells and looks amazing. I hope you try any of the recipes. If you do, just let me know in the comments and see you next week. Have a great week, guys. Take care, bye. Hey guys, it's me again. I just wanted to show you the inside of the moussaka. It turned out really well, really tasty. My partner loved it, so I'm sure I'll be making this recipe again and again. So in Bulgaria, we eat the moussaka typically with a side of yogurt. So just fresh yogurt out of the fridge. Uh, in my case, I served it with a green salad. So that was also excellent, really tasty. I recommend this recipe. And to top it off, we had a bite of the decadent crumble with a bit of vanilla vegan ice cream. This was amazing, guys. You need to try this. Okay, take care.